Facebook is in the process of cancelling Australian news on its platform. They've decided the best way to deal with the proposed media bargaining law in Australia is to just delete all the news. The law would force tech companies to negotiate with media companies over how much to pay them for news content, but obviously Facebook aren't willing to pay a single cent. Major publishers, the ABC News for example, are now restricted from sharing or posting any content on Facebook. There is now just a simple message stating, no posts yet. This move by Facebook means that any person in Australia can no longer get access to their news via the Facebook site. Google are joining in on the fun. If I do a search for SBS News for example, I'm met with these search results. Their Facebook page, their Twitter feed, and a Wikipedia article. But there is no link to their actual homepage. If I click on the Facebook link, I'm met with a similar page to the ABC where there are no posts yet. However, you can still see their web address in their About section. You can still click on their Sign Up button and it will take you to their actual news website with the main headline being, Attack on Democracy. Experts fear misinformation will thrive on Facebook under news ban. So although it's a ban, it's a pretty lame one. You can still access your news directly at the news websites. Perhaps it's a little bit of an inconvenience for those of you who don't like to step outside the comfort of Facebook, but you can do it with just a single click. Unfortunately, the Facebook saga has resulted in some rather innocent pages being taken down. The Bureau of Meteorology, for example, suffered the same fate. They had issued several severe weather warnings for parts of Queensland's far north that were not visible on Facebook, so obviously this could have been a real safety issue. Thank goodness Facebook came to their senses and reversed some of its changes, allowing government services to continue posting on the website with one lady writing, Welcome back, it's a weather page, not news. Without weather updates, we wouldn't know what was going on. You do a good job. Okay, you could argue with some of the things she had to say, but the point is clear. Some people rely on Facebook for news and weather. Queensland Health also got cancelled briefly, but now they're back up and running giving out their latest health advice. I know a few people who solely use Facebook for these health updates. Even universities have been targeted. Bond University's Facebook page, for example, is still offline. And guess who else got caught up in all of this mass cancellation? Yours truly. I tried to access my Facebook page yesterday and I was met with this. This page isn't available. Try it for yourself. It just doesn't work. I could only imagine that the only reason for this was that my page name contains the word Australia. So after doing a bit of experimentation, I won't bore you with the nitty gritty, I changed my name to Plain Old Daily Rant, which, believe it or not, worked. Now I'm just known as Daily Rant AU on Facebook and I've updated the rest of my social media to reflect this as well. So why are Facebook and Google, to some extent, doing this? Why are they so worried about a little old law in Australia? Well, the reason is they don't want a precedent being set. If the Australian government gets away with this, every other country in the world will follow suit, sending Facebook into a death spiral. Whatever you think of Donald Trump, Facebook successfully censored the President of the United States. Now they're taking on entire countries. Australia's eSafety Commissioner Julia Inman Grant had this to say on the ABC's Q&A program, This isn't just about Australia to them, this is about precedent and the risk that it poses to them on a global scale if other governments follow suit. Facebook's nuclear option has been heavily criticised for blocking crucial and official information from circulating on the platform, particularly given we are in the middle of a pandemic and bushfire season. International security expert Lydia Khalil also spoke on the issue. She said, Let's not fool ourselves. The decisions that were made around the commercial code Facebook made, government made, and media made were not based on the user and their needs. They were based on the commercial interests of the tech companies and the commercial interests of major media news organisations. And the user has been completely caught off guard and in the middle. We've gotten ourselves into a position where we have let a major commercial company that's driven by profit motive especially be responsible for a huge part of our information infrastructure structure. This is something that was caused by lack of regulation. It's incumbent upon us to have done something about this. So what does all this teach us? Well, it teaches us that these big tech giants wield a lot of power, more than they make out. 
We should take every act of censorship by them as an attack on our fundamental human rights. Yes, they defend themselves by stating that they are private companies who can make their own rules and decisions, but when those rules and decisions go against the fundamental fabric of society, then we've got ourselves a problem. Unfortunately again, corporate greed has got in the way of free and open public discourse.